Welcome back you legends, I'm Dr. Kyle and let's get right into today's weekend update video. This is going to be a quick one legends because I need to get some sleep. It's 2.30 a.m. my time and I have a job interview at 11 a.m. So uh, please legends, uh, pray for me. If this goes well, I'll have way, way more time to do these videos and updates for you. So slap that like button on your way in and let's get right into it. All the indices were initially up Friday and then uh, gave back all of those gains to close the day basically flat to slightly down. If we take a look at the stock market map, red all over the place for last week. The biggest hit names were cyclicals, things like Amazon and Tesla, as well as tech, Google, NVIDIA, Microsoft. The sector that did the best by far was defensive healthcare and defensive insurance. Okay, let's take a look at the different sectors. To end the week, energy and tech were slightly up. All of the other indices were flat to down. The weekly relative performance was clearly defensive. Look at this legends, consumer defensive, energy, healthcare, and utilities led the market with cyclicals, materials, real estate, communications, and technology lagging the market. So it was a very typical risk off uh, kind of trade last week, selling high risk assets, buying more defensive assets. And the week ended with all of the uh, sectors down on the week. Let's take a look at the daily chart for the S&P 500. Huge development legends. First things first, if you remember from my last video, I want to talk about the futures and I want to start with the futures actually. Let's take a look at the four hour futures. I pointed out that this was the deepest oversold reading in over a year. In fact, in 15 months, the last uh, oversold reading this deep was back in June and um, the market ended up moving sideways, putting in one final counter trend rally, a small counter trend rally, not a big one. Let's take a look here, legends, about three and a half percent, then came back down, put in a lower low and that established a double bottom with a positive divergence on the RSI, pretty much an identical setup to what happened Back here, legends, in September of 2021, same setup here. Market came down, put in this oversold reading, came back up. And this example had a much larger uh, counter trend rally. It was a 4% counter trend rally. Then came back down, put in a lower low that established a higher low on the PPO and established a double bottom with a positive divergence. You can also call this an inverse head and shoulder with a multiple point bullish divergence. <laughs> We're beginning to see that uh, developing legends, we had a low, we're now making a lower low as of the close of Friday. The RSI actually made a higher low, so this is a bullish divergence on the four-hour chart. We can also see pretty much the exact same bullish divergence on the two-hour chart, and it's happening near key key support from uh, August 18th. Pretty much the same thing here on the daily chart for the S&P 500 legend. We're getting very close to tagging this major support line. This support line stopped every major sell-off since the October bottom of last year. We're now getting super close to it. So I do expect a tag of that trend line, then a counter trend rally. So we can see some additional either uh, downside or sideways chop for a day or two. And then I would expect a counter trend rally back up at least to fill the gap at 438 and potentially to move slightly higher to 440 and 442. Here's another look on the S&P 500 daily chart. Our ultimate downside target by the end of October is 418. It was 420. I did some more granular technical analysis and it was closer to 418. There are a bunch of reasons as to why. Uh, many of which include these reaction highs in addition to the full measured move from the breakdown of the symmetrical triangle. We measured the full measured move by taking the distance from the bottom of the triangle to the top of the resistance. We use that same distance and that gives us the full measured move from the breakpoint of support. So the breakpoint of support was 440. Same distance applied gives us a target of 418.13 pretty much to tag the 200 day moving average. So that makes a lot of sense for me. And uh, if we take a closer look, we do have uh, this consolidation, this area of demand around, four to, uh, around 428. We also have a convergence of this support line also coming in around 428. So I do expect a, uh, so I do expect buyers to step in at this point and for a counter trend rally to take place. 
and for that counter trend rally to trap bulls I grab more liquidity and then continue the move down to 418. Here's what the projection looks like, legends. Backtest the support line, try to rally again, go into this area of resistance, find sellers again, come back down, break the support line, move all the way back down to 418. This key prior area of resistance will now act as support, also supported by the 200 day moving average. Now, I do have a range for this counter trend rally. The lowest level is actually 438.7 to fill this gap. The highest level is actually 442 to backtest this prior low and this breakdown level. The most likely level, in my opinion, is uh, identified on the one hour chart and it's this exact point of the breakdown it's exactly at 439.9 so that's my expectation fill the gap continue slightly higher to the breakdown candle 439.9 here it is found as support once broken through it will now act as resistance so that's my expectation come slightly down or potentially just move sideways continue to form those bullish divergences on the four hour two hour and one hour futures chart as well as the hourly chart on the s p 500 this chart we're already seeing a bullish divergence on this chart here it is legends lower lows on the hourly chart higher lows on the rsi stochastic has already crossed up and is getting ready to cross above the oversold 20 reading when that happens we usually get uh, breakouts just be very cautious legends this will very likely almost certainly will be another a uh, deadly deadly bull trap grabbing more liquidity all of that big money looking for a relief rally to dump more positions sell into uh, that uh, strength and to continue riding the wave down at least to 422 uh, my ultimate target legends is 418 422 is a key level because it's this gap. I do expect this gap to get filled, but I also think we could continue lower to 418. But honestly, anywhere between 422 and 418, we will likely find support at that level by the end of October. And that goes in line with seasonality legends. The last week of September, we tend to find a bottom. Then we tend to rally in the first week of October. That's the counter trend rally that I'm talking about. After that, we tend to move down again, form the final low for the year at the end of October. Around the third to fourth weeks of October, we tend to form the final low and then we begin to make higher lows and higher highs. So that's my expectation. Expect some uh, sideways moves potentially some additional downside action but limited then find support at this level rally to the upside find resistance at 439.9 potentially slightly higher at 442 but personally if i was trading this counter trend rally i will be uh, trading it more conservatively and taking profit earlier and getting ready to enter another potential short position to ride it even lower alongside the seasonally weak time of the year that is the second third and fourth weeks of october let's take a look at the vix does the vix support this thesis uh the daily chart doesn't give us a lot of information we do have this huge bullish candle followed by a hammer candle an inside hammer candle so there are some signs that the vix wants to turn back down if i take a look uh, at the hourly chart, we are likely now in the process of making potentially a higher high on the VIX with a lower high on the uh, PPO. And that will likely establish that that short term bottom around 428 on the S&P for a counter trend rally on the S&P higher and a breakdown in the VIX down to the 50 period moving average, this green moving average. What about the Qs? Pretty much the uh, same setup here, Legends. I expect some potential additional downside to 355 to backtest this low, then a counter trend rally back up to around 369.9, get rejected and then continue lower. Now the downside target for the uh, NASDAQ is actually significantly lower than the S&P. It's all the way down to 332. That's 10% from the breakdown candle, 10.5%. That is still my expectation by the end of October. So far, the NASDAQ has actually been outperforming the S&P. What do I mean by that? Notice that low on Friday was actually higher than this low in August, while on the S&P, it was lower. 
I do expect this NASDAQ 100 outperformance to actually completely uh, wane out by uh, by October. By the end of this counter trend rally, I expect tech to significantly underperform the S&P 500 and for the majority of the downside in tech to take place in the second and third weeks of October. So that's my expectation legend around 355 as support. Come back up, counter trend rally to roughly 369.5 potentially lower 367 369 anywhere between the bottom of this hammer candle and the bottom of this bottoming candle so this range right here reject here come back down to 355 and then a break 355 and continue lower to 332 what about the Russell 2000? It is getting super close to filling this gap at 175. I expect the Russell pretty much just like all the other indices to find some buyers this week. Continue lower, move sideways and shop, then find buyers. Then initiate a counter trend rally to the neckline of this head and shoulders pattern. Find a rejection here, sellers at 180 and continue lower all the way down to these prior lows. Why would I say that? Well, because legends, the full measured move from this head and shoulders stop is the distance between the neckline and the head. We take that exact same distance. We measure it from the neckline all the way down. It gives us this target of 164, which is the prior lows that we've seen uh, last year in June and in October. What about the smart money? Smart money up top, S&P 500 down below. We do have a clear bullish divergence a multiple point bullish divergence. This is the first bullish divergence that I played out already. This is the second bullish divergence, slightly higher low versus these lows as the S&P made a lower low. This is a bullish divergence. There's also a bullish divergence on these smaller time frames, higher low on Friday versus the low on Thursday, lower low on the S&P. All of these tend to indicate that we're getting closer and closer to that counter trend rally that I discussed. What about the CPC buy and sell uh, put to call ratio signal? Still, still trying to roll over, potentially forming this final top here in the next several trading sessions as we get that counter trend rally and that uh, uh, tradable short term bottom here in the next uh, five trading sessions. Let's take a look at the NYSC summation index still pointing down. I discussed this at length. And we're now expecting a second huge dip, right, in the oscillator, just like these double bottoms that we've seen in the past. All of these have corresponded with significant bottoms in the S&P 500. So short term, some additional downside to uh, sideways moves, then a counter trend rally. And then in the medium term, we expect that counter trend rally to fail and for the selling to continue all the way down to roughly 420 to 418 on the S&P 500 and for the market to find a bottom at that point by the end of October. NASDAQ summation index continues to point down. Again, we expect another huge dip in the oscillator or a huge bottom at the end of October. We're getting super close to this key support on uh, the NASDAQ composite around 13200 to 13100. This small range, we do expect buyers to step in here for a counter trend rally to take place fail around 13,600 and continue lower, break the support, move all the way down to this key, key 12,500 area. I expect the NASDAQ composite to find this area as major support by the end of October, supported by these prior lows, this uh, gap here, as well as the 200 day moving average. What about the 50 a day S&P 500 breadth? We're now at 18%, only 18% of S&P 500 stocks are trading above their 50-day moving average. We're back to the March lows. Again, expect some buyers to step in here, trying to buy the market, counter trend rally, failure, and move lower. Same thing on the 200-day uh, breadth. We've broken this key support line. Expect a move all the way down to the single digits here by the end of October. In the meantime, expect some counter trend rally. Back test this uh, trend line here, fail and move lower. Fear and greed, we're now at 36. I expect to see extreme fear by the end of October. We took out these prior lows. However, we're still making higher lows versus the uh, low in October and the low in March. 
So again, expect some counter trend rally here, then failure and continued move lower. Market momentum down to the 125 day moving average. We usually find some support around this level. This is another indicator to watch for that counter trend rally. Stock price strength still worsening. It moved sideways, then broke down. It looks uh, bearish still. Stock price breadth is now trying to form a double bottom here, just like these. Double bottoms, lower low, double bottom, lower low, again, double bottom, lower low, again here, double bottom, lower low. So this is an area where we should expect some counter trend moves. Put to call ratio, the market has made a lower low, while the put to call ratio actually made a lower high. This is a bullish divergence, very clear bullish divergence. Here it is again, legends. We can clearly see it here, S&P 500 made a lower low. Put to call ratio made a lower high. So this is a bullish divergence telling us that market participants at this low are less bearish. They're not as bearish as they were at this low, right? They did not buy as many puts relative to calls. This again goes in line with that counter trend rally potential that we could see develop as the market forms that short term bottom this week. Now, seasonally speaking, the S&P 500 really doesn't bottom all the way until the end of September, roughly two trading days before the end of September. That means around Wednesday or so, and we should see a nice counter trend rally to end September and begin October. Market volatility is above the 50 day moving average. Whenever we're above the 50 day, we're in the sell the rips kind of mode. Instead of buy the dip mentality, we get sell the rips mentality, meaning meaning lows are likely to be broken and make lower lows. Highs are likely to fail to make higher highs. So expect lower highs and lower lows, essentially a downtrend as long as the VIX is above the 50-day moving average. In terms of economic events this week, not much going on until Legends PCE on Friday. This is a very important number and it could mark a U-turn in the stock market. So if we rally ahead of the PC, expect a sell-off on the PCE. If the market bottoms and sells off on the PCE, then expect a rally afterwards. PCE and CPI have consistently been turning points in the market. If you'd like to support the channel, you can join our trading community where I post my daily analysis, trade setups, weekly expected moves in a dozen different stocks and indices. It's around $35 per month. If you go for the annual membership, it's a single payment. It comes out roughly to 35.75 bucks per month. Or if you want to do a monthly plan instead, it's 55. Obviously, Legends, you don't need to sign up for anything. These videos are completely for free. However, if you want to support the channel and you want to get daily real-time stock market analysis, stock picks, trade setups, or you want to ask me direct questions, you want my opinion on a specific setup, you can make technical analysis requests, all of that good stuff in the trading community. And it's the best possible way to support me and the channel if that's something you want to do. If you enjoyed this video, Legends, smack that like button right in the face. It's completely for free. It's another great way to support the channel. And if you watch the video till the end and you did not enjoy it, I do thank you for your time and attention. That's all I have for you today, Legends. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, wow.